Hello and welcome to a series I like to call Painting Pro Tips with Kurt. This is just a series where I go over my experience as an artist, you know, some tips, some tricks, some ways to save some money. I know we all need some of that. I know I do. In this particular video, I'm going to go over how to build a good art arsenal without being too hard on your wallet. Let's get started on brushes. Now, you don't need to buy an expensive brush to be good. Buy an expensive brush does not make you a better artist. Let's get that out of the way. If you go to any art store these days, you're going to see a whole section of very expensive brushes. Well, let me tell you something. If you're just starting off and you buy a $20 brush, you might accidentally ruin that brush by not cleaning it properly. Then you just have a $20 mistake. Take it from me. In most of my paintings you see me do, I use these $5 25-piece set brush kits. I mean, you got it all. You got ladder brushes, you got filbert brushes, you have one-inch brushes. Uh, these, uh, <laughs> these foam brushes. Uh, don't use them, they suck. You throw them away, you know? Or use them from kindling for your fire. Besides those brushes, um, this is all you need. Now with that said, I would purchase maybe one brush that's very good. Definitely want to get a nice 2 inch brush. Uh, this is the first application, how you put your paint down first. So, you might need to spend a buck or two on a 2 inch brush. And also a palette knife too. So these are the only two things that actually put some good money towards. All the other brushes, there you go, $5. Done. Let's move on to paints. Uh, paints are expensive. Um, I am not sponsored for any of these things you see here. Uh, the type of paint I usually use is Winsor & Newton. It's just a standard nice oil paint that gets the job done. One of these things cost $19. That sucks, right? Here's a paint life hack I had to learn in college because, yes, I went to art school. And yes, you have to buy your supplies along with your books, along with your credits, along with your room and board, along with your meals. And, uh, you know, uh. Now, in the United States, for at least where I live, there's two big uh, art stores, AC Moore and Michaels. Now, these stores offer a lot of coupons, so you gotta take advantage of these coupons and be very slow and patient with your purchases. So I got my coupon right here for 50% off. If I use this coupon, they generally give you another coupon with your purchase, for the next week. So if you buy a tube of paint with this coupon, with the next week, buy the next paint, get more percentage off, they'll give you a coupon, you can save money along the way. So instead of a $190 purchase, maybe down to like $90 to $100. Still a lot, but hey, you're saving tens to hundreds of dollars. Take it from me. Buy your art supplies that you need for your classes or eat. You save money so you can do this one. And like I said, once you buy all your initial tubes of paint, they're going to last you a long time. So after you get that painful purchase out of the way, enjoy yourself and do some paintings. Let's move on to paint thinner. Now paint thinner I generally use is turpentine. Make sure it's odorless or you'll be hacking up paint and misery for a week. And actually, <laughs> I have a funny story. Uh, first time I ever, actually first time I ever used oil paint um, and paint thinner along with that. Um, I was painting with my buddy Justin. And he has a very small room. I'm gonna map, map this out for you. It was summertime, so all windows and doors closed off. And we're nerds, so I don't know, we burned incense and Dungeons and Dragons. So imagine painting with oil paint and open paint thinner, that's odorless, because you can't really smell it, for like two hours in a very small area. So along with the incense, that's taking your action away. By the end of my first painting, I almost blacked out. So, rule of thumb, paint thinner, though it's odorless, does not mean the effects aren't there. They're still there. So use this in good ventilation. Now paint thinner, generally used to clean your brushes, or you can even use it on the application of painting. There's so many ways to go about oil painting. I just show you a few that I generally like, but we can go over more techniques in other videos. That being said, let's go on to uh, paint mediums. Now, one of the ones you always see me use in all my videos is good old Liquid White by the beautiful Bob Ross. Who doesn't know Bob Ross? Mm. Um, yeah, I totally remember waking up at six in the morning, watching this show, his soft voice, his beautiful paintings, I mean, you can tell I'm very inspired by how I do my videos, except he is very calm. I'm like... <laughs> now, mediums just aid the painting process, and they do multiple things. Some mediums make your paints dry faster. Some mediums make your paints wet longer, so you can mix and match and do fun things with. Now, I generally use the wet-on-wet -wet technique, so you put a wet medium down, and then it reacts with the wet paint. To me, it's a way to see the end result faster, so painting is more fun, because it's not 
days and days and days and days. Although I don't discourage painting many days because some of the most fantastic pieces of artwork took days, months, even years to make. But wet on wet, fast, effective, social media, five second attention span, ADHD, give me it now. So you could use a good old liquid light. I also enjoy using uh, linseed oil, another way to just keep your paints wet and mixable, usable. Um, but like I said, there's many mediums, um, so buy it, so get them. All right, let's move on to palettes. Now you could get a Player One Painter palette of power, these cool little plastic things that you can mix your paints on. Um, the traditional artists use these palettes, they hold them, paint them. They're fun and effective, especially if you're making videos. But some people don't like the hold and the feel. It can get kind of awkward and painful sometimes just holding it for hours on end. So instead of this, some people use these disposal palettes. Now these are awesome because they're very large so you can get all your mixing on there. After you're done mixing, you just rip it off, throw it away, done. Next palette makes cleanup an easy and painless task. Let's talk about easels for a second. Now you don't need an easel to paint. Um, I'm just so used to it because that's what I was taught on, just standing up, painting on an easel. So it just, it's, it's comfortable for me. Some people prefer to put their canvas on table and paint. Uh, there's even some tabletop easels. But I wouldn't go spending an arm and leg on those crazy expensive easels at the store. Uh, unnecessary. If you want to just get started in painting, uh, an easel is not something that you have to make a big purchase on. It's fun to have, but unnecessary. Which then brings us to canvases. Uh, on my shows, I use an 18 by 24 canvas, and as you can see, uh, Make sure you get them on sale. Uh, this is a bundle pack. Look at that. You get three. Get one free. Um, but I definitely encourage buying pre-stretched canvases. There is definitely an art of stretching your own canvas. And I'll even show you that on another video. If you start starting out, uh, it takes time away from the painting. You know, it may take an hour or two to stretch a canvas. So you want to make sure your canvas is ready to go and you can paint. Um, and they're not that expensive. Uh, unless you buy the expensive ones. Yeah, pre-stretched canvas. The thing, which then brings us to frames. Frames, they're awesome, but you don't need them. Especially these days. These days, frames are so expensive. Sometimes people would sell their artwork, you know, for whatever amount. But then, whenever someone wants to get it like customly framed, they're spending more on the frame than the painting. I mean, what's up with that? Uh, instead, these days, you could take a painting and simply just carry the paint on the side. So, boom, you got a nice painting here. You can paint the sides, and as you can see, hanging it on the wall. It looks just fine and professional. Well, that's enough for me today. Hope you learned something from this video, at least to get you started in the painting adventure. I know it's a lot at first, but whenever you accumulate your supplies, you'll be ready to go whenever the time comes. Don't be discouraged at first if painting is just not going your way. I, I didn't start until 10th grade. But then I just became addicted to it. I'm like, I kind of like this a lot. So I just kept doing it. And being inspired and passionate is the name of the game. Technique will come, stick with the drive, and you can do wonderful things. Well, thanks for stopping by. And be sure to check out our other videos around here. I think you'll find a thing or two that you might fancy. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, YouTube things they say. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!